Chapter 1. Drugs. As I mentioned previously, drug legalization was one of the first issues that helped me down the path towards the ideas of liberty. Growing up in Alabama in the 1980s and 90s, I was taught drugs are bad, and I remember the Just Say No campaign. Like most people, I was taught the government propaganda about drugs, especially the dangers of cannabis as a gateway drug. In high school, I always knew that I could find drugs, but never felt the urge or pressure to do drugs. In fact, I was 32 years old before I ever tried cannabis. During my public speaking class, someone gave a speech titled, Just Say No Is Not Possible. I don't recall any details of that speech and have not actually thought about it in probably 18 years. However, I can't help but guess that in some ways that speech helped me accept the truth that I would learn just a few years later. During my senior year government class, the teacher taught us about the failures of alcohol prohibition, yet we were expected to believe that drug prohibition was not only good, but also successful. Sometime during college, or shortly after I saw a show on the History Channel about the real history of drugs in America. I was shocked to learn that in the early 1900s, not only were cannabis, cocaine, and heroin legal, but they could be ordered from the Sears catalog. I was astounded to learn that cannabis was made illegal because of racism, yellow journalism, and propaganda. Cocaine and heroin were made illegal for similar reasons. I began to question how one substance, alcohol, required a constitutional amendment to become illegal and and yet other substances, cannabis, cocaine, and heroin, did not. To this day, I have found no sufficient answer other than the federal government during the Nixon administration essentially forced states to adopt certain drug laws. Now, over 40 years later, there is some progress being made, at least in some states, in rolling back the drug war, at least in regards to cannabis. In 2012, voters in Colorado and Washington voted to legalize cannabis, which in reality means that cannabis was to be taxed and regulated. Voters in Oregon, Alaska, and Washington, D.C. followed suit in 2014. Throughout history, until relatively recently, cannabis and other drugs have been completely legal to grow, produce, possess, and distribute. While I do not condone the abuse of any substance, tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, cocaine, etc., I do not believe that jailing people who use a substance that can be misused is a good way to discourage use or abuse of said substance. Let's not forget that cannabis does have medicinal qualities, and 23 states currently have laws allowing for medicinal use of cannabis. Cannabis. I have personally found that ingesting cannabis, primarily in the form of a tincture, does help alleviate my chronic headache and joint pain. However, it is difficult for me to find and obtain cannabis in the form I need, so I'm generally forced to suffer without relief. The only other treatment that has helped with the headache is a combination of prescription drugs, which includes a highly addictive barbiturate. Most people acknowledge that alcohol prohibition was a failure. When will people acknowledge that the war on drugs is a much costlier failure? Some people argue that a regulatory structure such as that adopted in Colorado and Washington will be the beginning of the end of the drug war. While the statistics show that arrests for cannabis possession have declined in Colorado by 84% since 2010, and arrests for distribution of cannabis have declined by 90% in the same period, arrests for public consumption have risen by over three and a half times in only one year, 184 in 2013 to 668 in 2014. However, cannabis is only one aspect of the drug war. Aside from asset forfeiture, the other aspects of the drug war are more taboo and less discussed in any serious manner. Additionally, one must define what is meant by ending the drug war. Some would be happy to see only arrest for cannabis possession be eliminated, but would support the continued prosecution of unlicensed cells, regardless regardless if they support licensing cells or not. While others believe that taxing and regulating cannabis but keeping the hard stuff illegal is a good enough end to the drug war. Yet others believe that all substances should be able to be manufactured, sold, possessed, and or consumed without government intervention. I fall in the latter category and do not believe that taxing and regulating a substance any substance can lead to the eventual abolition of the structure of taxation and regulation. I challenge you to think of something, anything, that has had a structure of taxation and regulation removed from it within your lifetime. I long for the day in which all substances are as legal as tomatoes. 
What do I mean? To my knowledge, there are no laws regulating how many tomatoes a person can grow, purchase, sell, or possess. There may be laws regulating business activity in general, but not tomatoes specifically. Thus, to truly end the war on drugs, the Federal Controlled Substances Act needs to be repealed, and all state and local laws prohibiting the manufacture, sell, purchase, possession, and consumption of all substances must be repealed. By saying this, I am not advocating that anyone consume crystal meth, only that one should not be treated as a criminal for simply doing so. It is not only costly to treat people with vices like criminals, it is also immoral.